Hi everybody, welcome back to Raw Online. Today we shall see about pathology of infectious enterocolitis. Enterocolitis is characterized by diarrhea, abdominal pain, and urgency to pass stools. It also has its component as perianal discomfort and anal incontinence. Very rarely the patient may complain of bleeding per recta. It constitutes 1 million deaths per year and the mortality is increased in children less than 5 years. The, there are a host of pathogens that cause infectious enterocolitis and it depends on the age, the nutritional status of the people, the geographic location, the immunity and the environmental influences. So, any bacilli or parasite is not specific to enterocolitis. It depends on various factors. We will see about all these things. Cholera, Campylobacter, Shigellosis, Salmonosis, Enteric Fever, Ersenia. Cholera, it is seen endemic in Ganges Valley of India. It is a reservoir in shellfish. Transmission, most of the enterocolitic pathogens are by fecal-oral route or contaminated uh, water or poultry, etc. Most of it are sporadic cases, but in some localities it may be present as an endemic thing. And cholera affects the small intestine, produces severe watery rice water stools characterized if untreated, it is characterized by dehydration and severe electrolyte imbalance. Campylobacter species, it is very common in developed countries with affluent people in a high income group and undercooked chicken, it is the main source of infection. So, poultry, milk and other food products are main etiological factor of Campylobacter species. It is also sporadic occur in any age group but more common in children and it is also one of the cause for travelers diarrhea. It affects the colon, watery or bloody diarrhea. Arthritis, gullian barry syndrome is one of the important cause of Campylobacter colitis. Shigellosis, worldwide it is distributed, endemic in certain developing countries. Humans are the sole reservoir, fecal oral root and contaminated food and water are the mode of transmission and more common in daycare centers, nursing homes, children and migrant workers affects the left colon, bloody diarrhea. So, Shigellosis is characterized mainly by bloody diarrhea. Complications, reactive arthritis, urethritis, conjunctivitis and specifically hemolytic uremic syndrome. Salmonellosis, again worldwide, poultry, farms, farm animals and reptiles. So, it is spread by contaminated food water and also meat, poultry, eggs and milk. Children and elderly people are affected. It affects colon as well as small intestine, watery or bloody diarrhea if left untreated may lead on to sepsis and abscess. Enteric fever, typhoid, we colloquially call it as typhoid. It is endemic in India and Mexico. Reservoir is, sole reservoir of enteric fever is humans. Transmission is fecal oral route, contaminated food and water, children, adolescents and travelers. Predominantly affects the small intestine, the ileum. Bloody diarrhea and fever. Chronic infection can be there. Carrier state is there and systemic complications are notorious in typhoid fever. Ersenia, it is seen in affluent western countries. Pork, pig, cow, etc. are the source of transmission. Clustered cases can occur. Ileum again is the common site involved and it can cause fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea and complication, reactive arthritis and erythema nodosum. E. coli, we have the various species. We will see one by one as we go into the class. Pseudomembranous colitis, it is caused by clostyroids. Previously, it was called as Clostridium difficile. Worldwide distribution, it is otherwise known as antibiotic associated colitis. So, 
antibiotic induced it is more common in hospitalized and immunosuppressed people who are treated with antibiotics common in colon watery diarrhea and fever whipple disease we have seen already in the malabsorption it's more common in farmers and people in contact with the soil and reservoir and uh, mode of transmission is unknown and it affects the small intestine distended macrophages with the trophorema whipple or c produces malabsorptive diarrhea mycobacterial infections again worldwide immunosuppressed individuals it produces severe enterocolitis affects again the ileocecal region malabsorptive diarrhea so with that introduction of what we are going to see we'll look each one one by one so the common causes are acute diarrheal illnesses and we encounter enterotoxigenic e coli and salmonella children we encounter most commonly the viral infections the viral diarrhea rotavirus norovirus and the adenovirus mycobacterial infections because we live in the tropical part of the world more commonly mycobacterial infections are also an important cause of enterocolitis